Hey everyone, I am back for yet another video, and today's is going to be about Ryak, a distributed key value store. If you asked my ex-girlfriend, she would say that me and this video have a lot in common, in the sense that the video is not going to be particularly interesting, and it certainly is not going to last very long. That being said, it's important that we cover Ryak because it seems to have come up a decent amount in my personal studying as um, a data system that a decent amount of companies will use, and so as a result, I'm going to go over it pretty quickly. Alrighty, so RIAC, what is it? Um, RIAC is yet another distributed database system that tries to achieve really high read and write throughput. It has a ton of similarities to Cassandra, which I've covered in the past, in terms of both the replication, the partitioning, the actual write engine, and I've covered those all previously, so if you haven't watched that video, I'd recommend just watching the Cassandra video, and then this video will make a lot more sense but it just mainly seems the most reasonable to discuss kind of the differences between Ryak and Cassandra because that's what makes Ryak a little bit useful. And uh, there are really only two main ones, so we'll go ahead and talk about those now. Okay, so in terms of data modeling, like I mentioned in the past, Cassandra is a wide column uh, store, which means that you have this concept of a row key and then you have any amount of column keys attached to that, uh, which have values. And um, you can also have this concept of clustering keys, which within a partition, and partitions are kind of delineated by that um, range of row key, uh, the clustering keys help determine the sort order. On the other hand, RIAC is really just a key value store, which means that all you really have is key and some value where the value can basically be anything. That means it could be a blob, which is kind of like a file, it could be JSON, it could just be a string or a number, or anything along those lines. So it means that, in theory, you could probably store something a little bit more complex, like, you know, a huge JSON document uh, with, you know, tons of lists in that, or, or even nested things, or an image, but at the same time, um, it means that you're probably not really going to have great secondary index capabilities and querying based off things in the actual value itself. You can do this um, using something called a secondary index in RIAC, but generally it seems not very efficient because every single um, key value pair will have to have this extra metadata now that enables you to search by the secondary index. You can also integrate your RIAC keys and values with um, a RIAC search index, uh, which is something I'll discuss in the future, but um, for now, it, the point is that natively, RIAC key value, um, you know, it's mainly just if you want to be able to search on keys. Okay, uh, what about conflict resolution? Because this is the other kind of important area. So if you recall, uh, both Ryak and Cassandra are using a Dynamo style um, implementation, which means that all writes are not going to one leader node, but rather they can pretty much go to any single node in the cluster that's gonna be handling that partition, and that node can accept that write. So inevitably, what's gonna happen is there will be race conditions and there will be write conflicts. Um, as for how Cassandra deals with this, they use last write win. So basically each write, once it reaches the server, is assigned a timestamp, and uh, the write ultimately with the higher timestamp is the one that's kept. There are two issues with this. The first is that timestamps are unreliable, so those servers might be out of sync, and so the wrong write may win. And then the second one is that what happens with the write that basically came in a millisecond before well, it's just lost, no one even hears of it, no one knows why it's lost, it's just gone. So, how does RIAC go and try and uh, fix this? Well, they use something called version vectors. Version vectors are a topic that I touched upon way back earlier on the channel um, in the multi-leader replication video. But the point is, version vectors are just a good way of keeping track of kind of what a client uh, has known about was in the database whenever they made a write. And by doing so, you can kind of keep track of the dependencies of a write and see if two writes for the same object were causally related, as in uh, one was done knowing about the other, or if they were concurrent, one was done without knowing about the other. And if they're concurrent, what you go ahead and do is actually store them as siblings. And once two writes are stored as siblings, it means that anyone reading from the database in the future will receive both of those siblings as a read, and go ahead and try to merge them in the application code. So in our backend, for example, we would be writing extra code to handle the fact that there may be siblings on a read, and then we would merge those in one way or another as we see fit and put them back in the database. But what if, for example, uh, you don't actually wanna deal with the merging and say you just want something that works pretty seamlessly like a counter or uh, a set or a map? Well, fortunately, we talked about that in the last video and that's called a CRDT, a conflict-free replicated data type 
which is just any sort of data structure that you can kind of have multiple sources of writes for and eventually they will converge to the same state. So some examples of this that RIAC has are counters, sets, and maps. And as a result, if we don't want to be writing custom application code in order to kind of handle the fact that there may be siblings in the database, using something like a CRDT allows us to have the database kind of handle those discrepancies itself and deal with the conflicts automatically, which is super useful. Okay. So in conclusion, RIAC is another super high throughput database. However, it only is really high throughput for single key reads and writes. Um, things like range scans over a certain you know, primary key but a given clustering key, as would work in Cassandra, don't really work that way. That being said, if you actually look at the internals of RIAC and Cassandra, they look super similar. They're both dealing with the same type of part partitioning schema via consistent hashing on a key, the same type of multi-master replication, uh, LSM trees, and read repair and entropy. So that's how they're able to achieve that high write throughput. But unlike uh, Cassandra, like I said, RIAC gives you a little bit more flexibility in terms of how you store your data, simply because a value can literally be anything. But it comes at the cost of the fact that since it's only a key value store, um, doing things like sorting within a partition are not very easy, and it requires you to either add extra metadata for a secondary index or in, uh, integrate some extra search index technology to work with your data. And then compared to Cassandra, kind of the main benefits of using RIAC are, like I said, greater flexibility in data storage due to values, um, and additionally, the fact that if you have conflicting writes, we're no longer using last write wins, which is kind of one of the biggest pitfalls of Cassandra. It's kind of like the easy way out for dealing with write conflicts. And instead, what RIAC will let you to do, uh, allow you to do is basically deal with siblings in a database and merge those in any way you see fit. Or if you don't want to do that, merge them automatically in the databases themselves using CRDTs. Okay, guys, I hope this video was helpful. Like I said, it was going to be a pretty short one, but the good thing is that now that we've touched on this key value store, we can start talking about in-memory key value stores and dealing with caching.